Amen. The book of James. We'll look at Scripture here tonight. I'm on too much on these monitors or something, Brother Mike. Uh, get down just a little bit. And the big ones too. Just a little. The book of James. The book of James. I want to preach a thought that uh, needs to be heard on a regular basis, probably about every six months in most churches, and more than that, a lot of them. Uh, but James talks about here some things here in the first chapter that I just want us to look at tonight. And I'm going to point out a few things about it, and I uh, hope that uh, the Lord might use it to help us tonight. James chapter number 1 and verse 1. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes that are scattered all greeting. So doctrinally speaking, the book of James written to the twelve tribes of Israel. Jewish. Jewish. Tribulation. Doctrine. My brethren, count it all joy. Now this is practical for all of us. When you fall into divers' temptation. It didn't say count it joy when you fall into the temptation or, or for the temptation. When you fall for it, you ain't supposed to rejoice. When you fall into it, that don't mean committing the sin. It means something you're tempted with and you resist it. That's what it means. Uh, in the diver's temptation. Know this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not. That means God ain't going to fuss at you. And it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea. Driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. And look at this verse, verse 8. A double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. Not just at church, all of his ways. In his business, in his work, in his home life, in his, in his uh, uh, work as a citizen, a daddy, a pastor, a preacher, a husband, whatever. A double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. Let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted, but the rich in that he is made low, because as the flower of the grass he shall pass away. For the sun is no sooner risen with a burning heat, than it withereth, but it withereth the grass, and the flower thereof falleth, and the grace of the fashion of it perisheth. So also shall the rich man fade away in his ways. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. When he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love Him. Now, we're going to look back at verse 7 and verse 6 and verse 8 tonight, where the Bible said if a man don't ask from something from God in faith, he's like a wave of the sea. He's back and forth. And then it says there in verse 8 that a double-minded man, double-minded, he's one way and he's another way. He's this way and he's that way. He can't get his head straight and go one way or the other. The Bible said is unstable in all his ways. So I want to use that as a thought tonight. And I'm going to preach tonight on the subject fence straddling religion. Fence straddling religion. The Bible talks about people who, who are double minded. They're, they're on both sides. They can't never figure out which way they want to go. They don't know if they want to be a Christian or a sinner. They don't know if they want to serve God or the devil. Uh, they're like that fellow that said one time, uh, I remember that story, something like, um, uh, they was having a, a mas yeah, they was having a masquerade party at Halloween, and one fella decided to dress up like the devil, and so he 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 put on his devil suit, and he had his horns and and pitchfork and everything was going down the road to the masquerade party, and it come a terrible rain, started just flooding. I mean to tell you, I mean it was all. So he looked over here, and here's a little old building on the side of the road, and he just run in it to try to get some uh, shelter from the rain outside. Well, lo and behold, it was a little country church. And they was in there having a big revival meeting. And they was all in there uh, praising God, you know, and packed out. Well, here come devil running in. And they said people just panicked. They started screaming. They started people jumping out windows. I mean, running down the steps. I mean, they was running everywhere. And everybody got up, this one fella, and he run and got his coat tail hung on a, on a, on a chair, a bench. And, uh, and the devil was right behind him. And he turned around, the devil was right behind him. He said, oh, devil. He said, I, he said, I've been a member of this church for 20 years, but I've been on your side all along. 
<laughs> and I, I bet you if that happened to a lot of church members, they'd tell that. They, devil, now really, I'm on side. I've been on your side all along. When the Lord's in here blessing, yes, we're with you, Jesus. Yeah, we're with the church. When they're out there, yeah, I'm on your side too. That's what I'm talking about tonight. Them that's in and them that's out. Them that loves the Lord and loves the devil. I mean, them that, uh, them that, uh, uh, them sinning saints, call it, you know, or whatever they are, I don't know. Bible calls it a double-minded man. I'm going to call it tonight fence straddling religion. Amen. Amen. That's what I'm going to talk about tonight. I want to say first of all this evening, I want to say what is fence straddling religion? What is somebody? Well, it's somebody, it's somebody trying to ride the fence. You know, they got one foot in the church. The other foot in the world. I mean, they want to be a Christian and a sinner. And we all sin. We all have a sinful nature and all of that. And I understand that. And I sure got one. Uh, but I'm telling you tonight, we ought to be on one side or the other. Uh, we ought to be on the Lord's side, of course. And so, what is fence straddling religion? Well, it is loose living. Living too close to the edge. See, I, I, a lot of people just see how close they can get to being a sinner and still be right. You know, that's what it is. Like that fellow, they said... Um, Years ago, uh, the king was trying to get somebody to drive chariots for him. And he had these three men come in. He said, who will drive the king's chariot? And the fellow come in. He said, I want to tell you something, king. He said, I'm an expert chariot driver. He said, I can get to within one foot of the edge of that cliff and never run off one time. He said, I'm your man. Uh, he said, uh, uh, sit down there for a minute. Next fellow come in. He said, king, I am the best chariot driver in town. He said, I can get to within an inch of the edge of that cliff and never run off. He said, I can stay right on the edge and never run off. He said, sit down now. I'll talk to you in a minute. Next fellow come in. He said, King, I'm not a very good driver. He said, but I try. And he said, but I tell you what, I stay just as far away from that edge as I can get because I'm scared I'll run off of it. And the King said, you got the job. You're the man I want. The man that's smart enough to stay afar. Listen, people, I don't care how good a driver you are. If you stay close to that edge long enough, you're finally going to slip off. I don't care how good a Christian you are tonight, how smart you think you are, I don't care how spiritual. I've heard people sit in church and say, I'd never do this. I'd never. When, when somebody messed up in the church, say, bless God, I'd never do that. I'm tell you something. I'll tell you what, you hang around that edge and you hang around sooner or later. It might take a while, but sooner or later that foot's going off the edge. I mean, you play with sin, it'll burn you. You play with fire and you'll get burnt. I tell you, we ought to just stay as far away from it as we ought not. You young people ought not to say, well, I'm going to just see how much dirty music I can do and still stay right with God. I don't want, I just want to see how many parties I can go to and st- you ought to stay as far away from the edge as you can possibly get. It's a lo- loose living. Amen. I tell you what, brother, it's like that little boy kept falling out of bed. And they said that little fella, he kept falling out of bed and he, he, he fell out of bed. And his mom went in there and said, what's wrong with you, son? He said, I fell out of bed. She picked him up, stuck him back in the bed. She went in there and sat down. Bam! He hit the floor again. Wah! She picked him up, put him back in bed. Son, what is wrong with you? Why do you keep falling out? He said, Mom, I guess I just keep staying too close to where I got in at. And she said, that's right. And so this time she stuck him way over in the middle. And the reason so many people keep falling out all the time is they stay so close to where they got in at. I mean, they've been saved, you know, they're saved, but they stay just as close to that world as we can possibly get, rub shoulders with it, court it, flirt with it a little bit, and still try to stay right with God. It is loose living. Amen. It is love of sin. It is love of ease. It is love of self. We don't want to fight. We don't want to stay right with God. We want to, we want to, we want to do just as little as we can get by with, and yet still be considered you know, right. Or still be considered separated or whatever. I'm telling you tonight, that's what fence straddling religion is. They're like grape nuts. They ain't grapes and ain't nuts. I don't know where they got the name like that. Hey Amen. They're, 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 they ain't a Christian. They ain't a sinner. I, I don't know what they are. And so tonight, that's what I'm talking about. What causes fence straddling religion? It is a loose living. Down in uh, near Rutherton one time, and I was getting ready to uh, we got a, uh, a wedding, somebody's wedding. I don't remember who it was, and I wasn't doing the wedding, but I was is some uh, related to some part of somebody's family or something. Anyway, I had to go, and all these people kept telling me. They kept telling me. They said, "Danny, they said we want you to come to our church. Oh, we just love you. Oh, you're just the greatest thing since light bread." And they said, "You're." Uh, they said, "We want you to come and preach at our church." And I said, "Well." Uh, 
that's up to you, preacher, you know. If he invites me, I'll be glad. Oh, we'd love for you to bring your singers and come to our church. And they just, and I, I thought, when they was talking to me, I thought something don't sound right about them. They just eat me up to my face. Then went down there to the, uh, the, the reception for the wedding and they was carrying in beer by the case. I'm talking tasteful. I'm not talking about just having a little spot to punch, brother. I'm talking about beer by the case. And I was going, I was going, oh, you know, and in my, my little old redneck mind, I was just saying, that's why you sounded funny. They sounded out of tune when they told me they wanted to preach, me to come and pray. You ever heard anybody like that? They try to impress you and make you think I'm on your side. But yeah, when they're over here, they're, yeah, we're on your side. And you know what happens to people like that? Both sides shows up one day and you get caught. Like I fell in the Confederate army and fighting with the North and you had him a Northern outfit and you had him a, a Civil War outfit for the South. And when the Southern soldiers were around, he wore his gray or blue or whichever one's which. And then when the, uh, the Northern around, he put on his blue uniform and he went pretty good there for a while. You know, one day they both come up at the same time and they shot him from both sides. And that's what will happen to you if you don't take sides one way or the other. That's what's going to happen to you kids at school. See, one of these days, you're with them, you're a sinner, you're a sinner, you're a sinner, you're a sinner. And you're at church, you're a Christian, you're a Christian, you're a Christian. One of these days, the two going to get together. And some of them kids you come to uh, go to school with going to come to church. Or some of these church people going to go to your school and you get caught. That's the same way it's going to be on your job. If you're a sinner, you're a sinner at work. And you're a Christian, you're a Christian at church. Some of them people you work with is going to come to church one of these days. And they're going to say, uh-oh, what's he doing in the choir? Uh-oh, what's he doing at cussing at work? Y'all, that's what happens when fence straddling religion. Amen, brother. I'm telling you, we need to, we need to make up our mind that we're going to get on one side or the other and stay right with God and know. Now me, you know me, I gotta walk a pretty straight line. People watch every move I make. People, people, Lord, I believe these people sitting out there right now waiting to see what I'm gonna do when I walk out these doors. Some of you, <laughs> shut up. Uh, they, uh, they's, uh, uh, I mean out in the parking lot. Uh, some of y'all know, uh, uh, I bought my forerunner the other day. We, well, I sold it to him on Thursday. Because I got another coming soon. Ain't that right, Brother Ray? Brother Ray's fixing me one up. And uh, uh, I, he bought mine. And he had my forerunner, I think, one day. And we had two phone calls at my house wanting to know who I was riding around with down here in Morgan. And I reckon it must have been Christy. I don't know. But somebody called and said, Who are you riding around with down in Morgan? I said, I'm at home in my room. They said, we seen you a minute ago and boy, I know you didn't either. I'm at home right now. And boy, I tell you what, they're watching me and they're watching you. They know if you claim to be a Christian. They know. And brother, they're watching you at work. They watch you at work to see if you bow your head over your foot. They watch you, brother. Don't you think they're not watching you? They watch every move you make. That's some of my friends the other day. I had two preachers call me wanting me to come down to spring break at Daytona Beach and help them give out tracks. That's right. That's right. I said, Lord, I ain't got time and I ain't interested. I ain't going to spring break at Daytona Beach. You retarded. You feel called to go down there, don't you? <laughs> Lord, listen, you don't want to be around a bunch of idiots like that. I know, I know people say, I, there's one girl told me, she said, I'm going to the beach at spring break. Now, time in the world but for a child of God to be around a place like that, brother. We need to take a stand and be on one side of the other. Say amen. Right there. Amen. Amen. So if you see my silver forerunner running, former forerunner, for, pre for. Whatever. Pre forerunner. Pre runner. Going down the road and it's weaving and whoever in it's drunk, it's him, not me. Don't blame me. Amen. 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 There's a lot of people, brother, they listen, they're a fence straddling religion. Well, secondly, this evening, what is the cause of fence straddling religion? What is the cause of it? Well, a lot of people's problem is just the love of money. Love of money. I mean, brother, they they get with that crowd. You know, there's people that would tell me, they said, Brother, I'd love to hear him preach. I'd go over there. But they know that if they came here to church, it would cost them. It would cost them financially. It cost, because that crowd, we had people in Marion. We had people in Marion there. We had some big shots come, not many, but a few big shots come. And one of them told me one day, he said, Danny, I'm talking about officials in the city. He said, Danny, you don't know what I go through just to come here to church every Sunday and hear you preach. He said, they give me a fit. 
And them big shots will pressure you and pressure you and pressure you because they want you to compromise and give in with them and they can't stand the thoughts of you coming over here and hearing Bible preaching and hitting the altar and praying and crying and getting right with God. That puts them under conviction and brother, people ain't willing to pay that price and sell out and try to straddle a fence. And that's why they go to a big dead church on Sunday morning and then they're right there at a cocktail party on Friday night and all the business deals get to working together and, and pour them a cocktail and drink a little liquor here and there, brother, and dance a little out there. And, forth. and then Sunday morning say, All to thee I surrender, Jesus. I'm telling you tonight, brother, we need to make up our mind if we're going to surrender all. Let's surrender all and quit trying to straddle a fence. Amen. One of them told me, he said, God's really working. Listen, sometimes people think God's working when God ain't working. Like that fellow, he got old, got so old, he hardly didn't know what he was doing. He got saved. And he got saved and he, and he, and, uh, he, he really got saved. And, and uh, a preacher come to see him not too long after that. He said, praise God, preacher, it's a miracle. He said, the Lord's doing miracles. He said, I usually have to get up in the middle of the night now and go to the bathroom since I got old. And he said, I get up and go to the bathroom and the Lord turns the light on. He said, it's a miracle. I just open the door and the light comes on. The Lord turns it on. Here's why I said, oh Lord, he's been going to potty in the refrigerator again. <laughs> he just thought the Lord was working. <laughs> he, he just thought the Lord was working. Some of y'all going to have to sink in on you a little bit. See, he just thought the Lord was working. The Lord wasn't doing that. There's a lot of them think that. There's a lot of them think the Lord's working at our... Boy, God is blessing. No, you just been in there. Going to potty in the refrigerator is what you've been doing. And that's about what it is, refrigerator. Amen. Thank God, brother. You, you listen, just because something like that happens once in a while don't mean God's working. Now, I'll tell you something about God. God's blessings don't always mean God's approval. God blessed the children of Israel out in the, in the desert for 40 years and fed them every day and worked miracles and as backslid as a devil. That's right, brother. Somebody said, well, I must be living right. God's with me. He's blessing Ted Kennedy. He's blessing the wickedest people in the world being blessed by the mercy of God. That don't mean He's pleased with you. If it's not according to His Word, He ain't pleased with it. Amen. I'm telling you what causes Australian religion, hanging out with the wrong crowd. Amen. People say, people say, well, those so and so. Now I know they use other versions of the Bible and they bleed weird and all of that. But I just like going over there. I tell you something. Whoever you hang around with, you're gonna end up being like. Some of y'all been hanging around here, been coming. Some of you visitors been coming around. It won't be long till you won't be able to stand nothing else if you hang around here long enough. You know why? Because it'll rub off on you. Well, the real spirit will rub off on you, and you won't be able to stand that fake stuff no more. And that's why a lot of people they go around that fake stuff so much that it rubs off on them. They become one of these professional Christians. You know, it's all polished and it's all outward and it's all dry. I've heard these guys on the radio, and everything they're saying is true, but there's no power and no. No conviction and no. Now it don't make you want to get right. It don't make. Let me tell you something, people. I said the other night to camp meeting. It ain't enough that we know God's here. They got to know God's here. It ain't enough that we know. People say, "Well, I know God's in our church." That ain't enough, brother. When a lost man comes in, he's got to say, "God in this place." Amen. Amen. Amen, brother. Amen, brother. Here, listen. Hanging out with the wrong crowd. Let me tell you something else. Trying to please everybody will cause you to straddle a fence. There ain't no way under God's heaven you can please everybody. You'll die, kill yourself trying to please everybody. I, when I first started preaching, it drove me crazy if anybody complained about anything. Honestly, it did. It bothered me if somebody complained. It bothered me. Thank you, Dixie. I love you very much, Brother Danny. <laughs> Thank you, sister. Uh, listen. Hey, I'm going to tell you something. It'll not get you to heaven, though. Do you know something? I'm a, what was I talking about? Yeah, I'm trying to please everybody. When I first started preaching, if somebody complained about something, I know y'all complain about stuff. I catch it a little bit. You try to hide it from me. But I catch it every now and then. Everything. If, if we bought land over there or land over there, there'd be somebody in here that said it was a bad move or we, we couldn't afford it or we should have done something else. I mean, there is no way to please everybody. It's impossible. You know, we had uh, 
We had Brother Randy uh, in revival a few weeks ago. He done a good job. I thought he done a tremendous job and everything. But Brother Randy preached. He preached pretty long. And there was a, there was a few of you. There was a few of you who said, "Brother, I love that. I can't wait for him to come back." And there was a few more of them said, "Well, whoever said that, let him have this baby the whole service." Amen. See, see, there's a few of you fellas sat up here and said, God, I'd love to hear him preach. And there's some of them in the nursery for three solid hours saying, Lord, please, if I make it through this, I'll, I promise I'll love you from now on. So you know what you people got to do? You got to understand, everybody can't have their way. So you say, why don't Brother Danny do this? Why don't Brother Danny do that? Let, let me teach you something tonight. You've got to understand that you ain't the only person in here. There's all kinds of people in here. There's little Christians, big Christians, there's young people, there's old people. And my job is to try to give everybody something that will help them grow. So Lord, have mercy. Give us a break. Uh, help. Trust me a little bit. I'm trying to give everybody something. I could get up here every Sunday night and preach on doctrine and all the tribulation stuff and all these young preachers, everybody would eat it up and two-thirds of the congregation would be in la-la land and it wouldn't help you one bit. And sometimes you have to ignore the strong and feed the weak. A doctor don't go around and check on his patients that there ain't nothing wrong with. He goes in them rooms where they're dying, where they're critical, where they're physically bad off. He spends his time with people that need it. And that's, you, listen, brother, you can't please everybody. I, if somebody said it's too hot, that bothered me. If they said it was, I froze to death, that bothered me. And somebody said the singing was too loud, it bothered me. Somebody said he preached too loud, it bothered me. And boy, I had to learn a long time ago that if I could do my best to please the Lord, and if I can go home tonight and say, God, it wasn't much, but I tried to do what you told me to do, I can turn over and go to sleep and say, praise God, cause there ain't no way in the world I can please everybody. Amen. Amen. Amen, brother. I'm telling you, brother, uh, you know, if we do something for the bus kids, people say, why don't we do something for the church kids? And we do something for the church kids, the bus workers say, what about our bus kids? And if you do something for, you know, for missions, people say, we need it here. If you do something here, people say, what about the mission? You know, there's no way we can please everybody. We just try to do the best we can and please God and then go to sleep and don't worry about it. Amen? Amen. Amen. Sometimes people don't know what they're talking about anyway. They're like my aunt. i got an aunt that's got something bad wrong with her. I don't know what it is. I'll... Uh, Every time a phone rings, she picks up the remote control and says, Hello. <laughs> That's the truth. That's the truth. And she, she says, They won't never talk to me. <laughs> What's the cause of fence straddling religion? Trying to please everybody. Now let me say this and I'll move on. There's no way in the world that you can please them people you work with and be with in crowd and everything and still stand in there and please God. It's impossible. Teenagers, you cannot be accepted in the world, in the crowd, this world, and at the same time have the blessings of God on you at church. Can't do it. Can't do it. Make up your mind. Get off the fence. Get in here. Take your stand at school. Be a soldier for Jesus. Get off the fence. Amen. All right. Number three. What are the effects of fence straddling religion? The effects of it is it'll catch up with you sooner or later. Like that girl went to a dance. I mentioned that this morning. I don't know why I mentioned it again tonight. Maybe somebody needs to hear it. I guess the reason why I'm saying that is because you don't have no business going to a dance. Period. And I don't care if you do go to a public school, you ain't got no business going to a dance. That ain't no place for a Christian. No place. As old preachers used to say, a dance in foot and a pray don't grow on the same way. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And you know what? So that girl went to a dance one time and she's going to prove to her daddy, she said, I can go to a dance and still be a Christian. So she went to a dance. She stood around there and stood around there. Next thing you know, this wicked boy come up and asked her to dance. She got out on the, on the dance floor and started dancing. And she said, I promised my daddy I'd try to witness. So she said, are you a Christian? <laughs> and and he said, no. Are you? She said, yeah. He said, well, what are you doing here? That's where fence straddling religion catches up with you. The sinner had better sense. Lost boy had better sense than that girl. And number four, I'll say this and I'm done. What is the cure for fence straddling religion? Well, I mean, it's, it's simple. Number one, quit worrying about what people think about you. 
He said, well, people think, people think, people think, people will think, everybody will think, everybody will think, my friends will think, my friends will think. Oh, who cares? Yeah, right. It ain't matter a hundred years from now. It ain't going to matter when you're in heaven or hell what nobody thinks. Quit worrying about it. Amen. Then I'll tell you something else. Let God be true. Let God be true and every man a liar. Somebody said, well, the people at school think that abortion... Did you hear about the other day that they're, they're passing... I saw it on the news. I just caught the last part of it. Some of y'all might have heard it. That they're now trying to make a new law called the Lacey uh, uh, Peterson that, and that kid Connor, Lacey and Connor law who makes it a crime to harm an unborn child. And all the abortionists are taking a fit because they think you're supposed to be able to harm an unborn child. And you'd be surprised at the Christian people who say, well, I think if a woman wants to have, have, have rights, a woman should have rights. We're not talking about women's rights. We're talking about babies' rights. Where you say, well, are you pro, are you pro-life or are you pro-choice? No. It's pro-life and pro-death. Pro, you're either pro-life or pro-death. You believe in letting them live or you believe in killing them. But the hypocrites on the news won't let you talk like that. Like they say pro-life, pro-choice. There ain't no choice to it, brother. You either believe in killing them or letting them live. Pro-life, pro-death. Get off the fence. Let God be true. And I'm a man liar. Yeah. According to the Bible, John the Baptist, and I know some Baptist preachers who don't believe a born murder. I know that it don't matter what they th- say or think. I'm going to tell you tonight, brother, listen, that book said John the Baptist was named. He was called in his mother's womb. He shouted in his mother's womb. Jeremiah was ordained in his mother's womb. Called to preach. And you can't tell me that ain't a human being. Get off the fence. Quit worrying about what somebody else is going to think about you. Start living for God. Amen? Start living for God. and Get in there and serve God and get off the fence. The way to get off the fence is take this leg, sling it over here where this one is. Like that. And some of you still got one foot out there in the world. Swing it on in, man. Put your right foot in. You put your right foot out. And, and, and you shake it on in, brother. Get on in with the Lord. Get off the fence. Start living God. Some of y'all need to take a stand. I'm not, I'm not saying you should be a smart aleck. I'm not saying you ought to go to work and say, Bless God, I'm here. I'm going to tell you one thing. King James Bible is good enough for Paul and Silas. is good enough for me. I'm not saying be one of these idiots. I know one preacher uh, was out some, with some guys playing, playing golf. And uh, one guy lit up a cigar and he said, I don't like that cigar. I'm not talking about being an idiot like that. Stupid. You don't have to go around telling everybody what you're against and running your mouth. And you don't even know what you're talking about. I'm just saying, you don't have to try to look for a fight, brother. You just stand. It'll hit you. It'll hit you. Because the whole world's going this way. You just stand there. You're going to get hit. There'll be plenty of controversy. Plenty. Without you going and sticking your nose and stuff trying. I know people just, just go to work and they... Oh, hey, yeah, you go that? Well, I'm against that. Well, you just shut up. Don't be self-righteous. You just stand for what's right. You'll have all the, the battle you can stand by just standing for what's right. Let's just get off the fence. Some of you young people tonight, get off the fence. Some of you parents here tonight, you've been kind of waddling around on it. Get off the fence. Get in there for God. Let's stand by our heads for prayer.